Okay, so everybody, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, the class section of the day. Uh, be, uh, please know that it's being recorded and will be posted on YouTube. Uh, so, so just be aware of that. Uh, I, I just got an email notification uh, that said a couple of people are having some trouble submitting onto Moodle still. Uh, just go ahead and email me what you've got if it's not showing up on, on Moodle. Uh, it, it should have been there, but maybe for some reason it wasn't set to um, uh, visible or something like that. So, so please uh, uh, go ahead and just email me or Dr. Regis the, uh, the homework assignment uh, just so that we can get there. We'll be definitely lenient uh, when it comes to timing. Just try to get it as soon as possible to us. Um, so uh, before I move on to the, the lecture for today, uh, I do want to say that we are having a um, um, exam on Thursday. Uh, the exam is going to be super, super straightforward. Take home exam in Microsoft Word, um, and you are allowed to, um, uh, you know, have an open book, have open notes. Of course, we won't do it over Google Meet. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's an individual work. Okay. So try your best to get that done. Uh, and we'll make very sure that we understand that with the um, uh, instructions that are given. Uh, this will cover just chapter two, and I will send out an email um, um, uh, with the sort of preview of it. But the preview isn't as important since you have 24 hours to, to cover the exam. So hopefully that won't be a big problem. Uh, so I want to move ahead and, and go straight to um, uh, today's lecture. Let me see if I can get this. All right. So I'm hoping everybody can see the um, uh, presentation. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave this thing on the left-hand side. Uh, give me a second. All right. Maybe we can get a little bit more. Yeah, hopefully you can see it pretty well. All right, today we're covering Turing machines again, and I'm really going to try my best to get y'all uh, y'all's interaction here to try to replicate at least a little bit of what uh, we have in the 479 classroom. I really hate online delivery for a course like this. I really don't feel like you're getting the 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 pure benefit of it. So I am going to ask for for a little bit of a uh, back and forth today. Uh, because this is just mind-numbingly boring if we, we don't have that. All right, so where do we stand in the class? We are covering the Turing languages. These are the languages that are in every way equivalent to what we see. Oh, Connor doesn't see a screen. Oof. Uh, does anybody see the PowerPoint? Let me know. Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. Oh, very, very cool. All right, awesome. Okay, I had Thank to use pin, and that would turn off the PowerPoint. So if anyone has gotcha. pin, that's why. Oh, well, thank you so much for stopping me because I, I, you know, I don't want, want to screw up because it's I'm nervous enough with this uh, stuff. All right, <clears throat> so we're covering Turing machines, which are in every way equivalent to uh, the the languages that we see for for regular computing, right? So it's it's a big deal because we're talking about what is and is not computable now. All right. So last, I'm sorry, two Thursdays ago, we looked at what a Turing machine was and it looked like an old cassette tape. It was this infinitely long tape with a reader and a writer. And what we're going to focus on today is how we can build Turing machines without thinking of those circles and arrows as what controls it. Instead, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a specific language palindromes of even length. So like a ABBA -A would be a, a, a string in this language, but not BAB, -B, right? So that's an, an odd length string. We want to do a palindrome of even length. And the way I want us to think about it is think about it in terms of the tape. We are going to focus on this data structure, and we're going to think of it as a data structure, this tape. Now, the tape for a Turing machine is infinitely large. It is, 
it is infinitely long from the left to the right. But the way it starts out is it starts out with this little blue arrow right here, the reader pointing at the beginning of the input string. And the input string is set on this tape. Everything else on this infinitely long tape is set to these blank characters, right? So it's a blanked out tape. But everything, um, oh shoot. But all of the input string characters are already on this tape. Now, as we can see, if we're looking at palindrome of even length, it starts off with A, B, A, A, B, A. And we're going to check and see if this is palindrome. Palindrome is the same forward as it is backwards. So an A on the front means an A on the end. A B and a B and then an A and then an A. Now, it is important what I just did to check whether this is a palindrome. We're going to start thinking about um, the, the way we would figure this out. We're going to try to think like computer scientists. We're going to think like 161 and 280. How do we check if it's a palindrome? If it's the same way backwards as it is forward, where I can write it down here backwards. But instead, I went A in the front, A, B, B, A, A. That is exactly how we are going to check this palindrome on the tape. We're going to write an algorithm that checked. Well, was the first one the same as the last one? What about this one and this one? What about this one and this one? And we're going to write it as an algorithm so that we can see how this is done. All right, so let's check really quick about what a Turing machine has. A Turing machine has three operations every single time that it reads a character, it writes a character, and then it moves the reader. So we saw this in these, these transitions that would look like this. It would read an A, and then it would write a B, or write an X. Oh, I'm sorry. It would read an X, then it would write a Y, and then it would move left. And we would see that denotation on every transition of a Turing machine. So that's the operations that a Turing machine can have for every letter that it reads. It reads it, it writes something there, and it moves the reader either one to the left or one one to the right. Now to the algorithm. And here's one of the craziest things. Now you might remember go to statements as labels whenever you had it in 290. But in general, we think of go to statements as the devil, like the thing that ruined all of computer science. Edgar Dijkstra wrote a paper that's now infamous called the death of the go to statement or something like that. And And it was saying that this was horrible because it created spaghetti code. But here's the thing. We are going to use the go-to statement a lot in our algorithm. So you're actually going to see what it used to be to code with these go-to statements. Every line of the algorithm that we are going to write is going to follow this movement. If I read an X, then write a Y, and then move left. And this next line is going to be at go-to label. And that's going to be our go-to statement. That's how we're going to write these. And we're going to use these lines of code to do a lot of different things. Most importantly, not listed as matching, but we're going to search for characters. We're going to fast forward on the tape. We're going to rewind on the tape, stuff like that. And, and as we build these out, we're going to be building our intuition. Just like every other machine, we're going to have to build our intuition like this. Just like every data structure that we've ever used in courses like 390, we're going to build our intuition, intuition in using them. Okay, so that's the point of today. We're not going to use state diagrams. We are only going to use algorithms to solve this. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on is algorithms. Let's return back to this language. Palindrome of even length. Okay, so when this Turing machine starts, We start at the very beginning of the string. Our reader, this blue arrow here, starts 
<clears throat> on the first letter of our input string, everything else is blanked out. So let's think about where it starts. When it first starts, that reader is going to be pointing at one of three things. Okay, in this language L, there's only A's and B's. That means it can either be pointing at an A, it can be pointed to a B, or it could be pointed to a blank. Those are the three options that are there. All right. So what we're going to start off is we're going to start off by matching, which means that we need to look at this A and what our machine is going to do. And this is this is exactly what we're going to start with. We're going to say, OK, we started the Turing machine and that reader ended up pointing to this A, this very specific A. And when I see an A, here's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to give you the preview of this. And then I'm going to start asking you all to help me build this out. When I read an A, I'm going to mark it out as I've read that. I'm going to read an A, mark an X, and move the reader to the right. Okay? So this is an example of showing that we, we, we read an A, we marked it out, meaning that we've read it. But now what do we want to do? We've read an A, what do we want to do? Let's move ahead and see this. With the start, the way we would write this out is if I see an A, I write an X, and I move the reader to the right. But then I go to match A. All right, and that means I'm going to write a little algorithm here. I'm going to write a little algorithm that for when I read this, it was an A. Now I want the algorithm to go over and match it to a B. All right, so let's go down to our next slide, and that's where we're at. <clears throat> we are matching an A, and our reader is pointing to a B. Let's think about the very first slide I covered. A, A, B, B, A, A. Done right? Let's think where we were. We're writing a match A. I just made this A an X. What is, what, what do you think algorithmically I need to do next? What do you think algorithm? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. What do I want to do next? Right. Tyler is saying that we need to go to the end of the string. We need to go to the very end of the string. So here's exactly what I want to do. I want to go, uh, oh, well, how do I do this? Uh, I read this A, and I marked it as an X. I want to go off to the right. But let's build it out algorithmically. If I read a B, I don't want to. I don't want to change the string to go to the end of it. I just want to fast forward. If I read a B, I want to write a B, and then I want to move to the right. Then I want to go to match A. If I read an A. I want to write an A, move right, and go to match A. But and, and Tyler, you can answer this. When do I stop this loop where I go, okay, I've, I've read an X and I went to match A. Match A says, if I read a B, write a B so I don't change it, and I move this to the right. Then go to match A, so I start back up here. I read an A, yes, I write an A, and I move it to the right, and I go to I read an A, I write an A, I move to the right, and I go to match A, and, and I did see your answer, Tyler. Thank you for, for finishing off because I wanted you to be able to finish because of your idea. Um, we sit here and we have a new state and it says if we get a blank character, if we get a blank character, we want to 
keep it blank and move to the left. You are absolutely right. And then we're going to go to a new statement. Maybe. <coughs> Probably have a little cough. <coughs> I don't have the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're right here. Can somebody tell me what do I do next? Uh, I moved left. Now, what do I do? Uh, just confirm it's an A. Confirm it's an A. I'm not sure how to do that. To be honest with you, I'm not sure. Um, would you just push something to a stack whenever you check the first day and then pop it off? It's all? a great thought, but we don't have a stack. Ah. Just read the A and uh, write next. All right, so absolutely. And I think that was Philip. Uh, is that right? Yeah. All right, so here's the one thing. Now, Philip and Tyler together got that 100%. Uh, because, uh, Tyler, I'm going to give you the hint that we have here is that the title of this algorithm is match A. So we actually remember that it was an A. So we don't need the stack to keep track of it. That was an excellent observation, though. I mean, it was really good because you're saying, how do we know it's match an A? Because there's another one called match B that we're actually going to use. Now, Philly was saying that we, we see an A. So if we read that A, we can, we can mark it as an X and go on. But here's, here's the the catch I'm going to give you, okay? I'm going to change this up a little bit, and I'm going to move this around so I have a little bit more space. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new section, mark A. And now, on mark A, this new section, I'm going to have this new capability. <clears throat> if I read an A, I write the X that Philly wanted me to, and I move, uh, which way do I move? Um, you'd go left if you're on I think the so last too. day. I think so too. And then left, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this new state, and I'm, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint to where we're going. I'm gonna go to rewind here. <laughs> So, but here's the thing. If I got there and I and my reader was right where what would have happened if I read a B there? Um, you fail. Uh and it's it doesn't it's not a uh a string in that language. It's not a palindrome. Absolutely. It's not a palindrome, so we reject it. Reject it. All right? Because if I was here at X, this A, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to mark this or match this A. And I go all the way to the end, and I come back, and I'm going to mark this A. If there's no A there, then that string was not in this language. The first character was an A, so the last character better be an A. If it's not, reject it. Uh, do I have to check to see if it was a blank? Um, whenever you're going to that, wouldn't you need to check for that first? Yeah, they would have already seen it. So yeah. since we had gone to the right until we saw a blank and then we went left, there'll never be a blank there. So yeah. we're good. We're, we're good there. Um, for those of you that are missing the webcam, I'm over here waving my arms around like an idiot, even though nobody can see me. So uh, there's a great commentary on this side. All right, so very, very good talk. So we are here, and now we need to go somehow over here we marked this x we matched the a by going all the way to the right essentially fast forwarding we got to the blank we went to the left we we saw the blank we wrote the blank we moved to the left and we went to mark a if there is an a write an x 
and move this to the left. And then it says, go to rewind. And so that brings us where we're at right here. All right, we're here on our string. We know that the first A and the last A were matching up. So where do we want to go from here? Where do we, where's the next spot that we're going to go? To the first B, right after the X. To the first B. And that was everything, all right? Now, I saw something that, uh, I don't remember who said it. All right, so Tony put, put us right where we're going to be in just a minute. And, uh, and that's, that's really at this start plus two section. And that's, that's kind of, I'm not going to remove this because he's already kind of seen that here. So I'm going to erase that. So, so we marked our X and everything is good. And what we're wanting to do is exactly what uh, I think it was Tyler said. We're going to rewind. We're going to move this reader all the way over here until we get to this B. Okay. So let's think about all the characters it can be. It can be an A. It can be a B. It can be a blank. That's probably it. All right. So <clears throat> let's start off over here. We're here and we want to get this reader here. So right now it's reading a B. What do we want to write when we read that B? Uh, an X? Mm, or, have to think wait. about it. Oh, because uh, it's supposed to, be, it needs to be the same um, on both ends. So you could just read that, uh, change it to an X, and then go back until you get to the, first available, uh, first non-X character. That is, that is a correct answer, and I'm not going to say it's wrong, but I think there's actually an easier way. And, and Denver, I think, posted it in chat. What we can do is instead of changing this to an X and marking this and matching it with this, what we could do is we could just move this and then start the whole process again, which is what Tony was getting us to a little bit earlier. Right. So instead of instead of that way, and I want to be absolutely clear, Tyler, that was a right answer. All right. But instead, what I, what I want to do is this way, where if we read that B, I want to write the B and move over to the left. Just because what I want to do is I want to skip over all of this stuff. I want to skip over all this stuff and get here. So in doing it, just rewinding, I'm going to move left and then go to the same state. Or I want to say state the same label, okay, to go to rewind, All right? So that, that would put us here. If we read a B, keep it a B and move to the left, all right? Then we go to rewind. All right, now we see an A. If we read an A, what do we want to do? Same thing, both an A. Same thing. Right, write that as an A. Move left. And the same exact thing, all right? And we go here and we move to the left. We see an A, we write an A, we move left. We see a B, we write a B, we move left and go to rewind. We see an X and and what do we do? You need to move right. Yeah, I need a new S. In fact, I actually can't see a blank, so I'm not even going to do that. If I see an X, what do I want to write? An X and then move right. Yeah, let's just leave it the same thing because we already checked that one. And through this algorithm, we get here exactly what we wanted to do. We were here. If we read a B, we kept on going. If we read an A, we kept on going. We read a B, kept on going. But when we got to this X, we moved to the right. Now, Tony already said this. Here's what's interesting. Where are we going to go to? We have as options start, match A, mark A, and rewind. We're right here. Where do y'all think we can go to? Yep, Denver and Denver got it. We can go to this start. We can go right back to the start, and let's think about what that gets us, okay? Um, we go to start. This is where it is. I'm going to copy and paste the start that we wrote, okay?
okay? This is just from earlier. All right. Now, if we see an A, we write, we don't see an A. If we see a B, write an X. Move right and then go to match B. Uh, we haven't written match B. All right. So, but what, what we're going to do here is, is we had a B, we wrote an X, we moved right, and just like before, we went A, and then we went all the way to the end, and we matched that with an A. Now we're doing B, we want to go all the way to the end until we see a B. Well, you know what? I think we have a pretty good example of how to do this matching. We are going to straight up copy and paste the match A and mark A, but instead we're going to do it to do B's because now we're going to be matching the B's. Give myself a little bit more room here. All right. So if we see, let's see, change it to B, mark it to B. All right. Remember where we're at. We saw a B right here. This was a B. Uh, I wish I could write it. I can write it. I know how to computer. All right. This X, it was a B. All right. We read an A. We write an A. We move right and we go to match B. We read an A, we write an A, we move right, and we go to match B. We read a B, we write a B, we move right, and we go to match B. But now we see if it's a blank, shoot, what do we have to add? If it's an X. If it's an X, good. If it's an X, what should we want to do? Write a write an X and then move left. Move left, absolutely. We'll move left, and then, understandably, we're going to go to mark B, B. to get this done. Okay, so this is going to move our little reader over to the left. It wrote an X, and it moved to the left, and now we're at mark B. If we see an A, right there. If we see a B right there, if I move this over here and I see an A, what should I do with that string? Project. Project. Absolutely. Yeah, right. <clears throat> if I see a B, what should I do? Write an X. Right, then. And is, it, is that right? Mm -hmm. Right, X. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks then you just then you move uh, left, and I guess now go back here's the rewind. Hard part. Good, and we go back to the rewind. We go back to this rewind for each one. So what this is going to do is, if I see a B there, I'm going to mark it as an X. And then I'm going to move this over to the left. All right. So let's put it all together and go through an entire algorithm for it. Now, y'all bear with me for just a minute, please. I'm going to do some copy and paste here. Uh, but we're going to put each one of these together. And we're going to have to add a little bit to our algorithm, but we're going to put some polish on it now. All right. And we're going to finish this algorithm together. So I'm going to, like I said, just give me a second here. Um, I probably should have had this better prepared. Um, but I'm teaching right now, but all right, a little bit of copy and paste. Start 
Mate Marque. Uh, then we have Rewind. Match B and Mark B. Ooh, that's everything. That's our whole algorithm that we just wrote uh, to, to do this. Now, there's no label for accept and reject. Oh, shoot. We don't have an accept at all, do we? This literally never accepts strings. We're going to have to step through this piece by piece and get to uh, there we go. And we're going to have to get to where we figure out whether or not we accept or not. We're going to have to figure this out. Uh, and I do have a big question mark where we might see this. All right. So, so stop me now. Is anybody needing me to go back over any part of what we've done? All right, so uh, many thanks to uh, uh, Tony, Denver, and Tyler. Y'all's feedback is really helping me a lot, so I really appreciate it. Um, Y'all are really helping me um, with the flow of this. Okay, so let's go through this string together, and let's talk about the accept and reject and finish off this algorithm, because this is really, really close. In fact, let me save it so we don't lose our work. All right, <clears throat> uh, Raj, your ans the, the answer is no. Uh, the Test two does not cover Turing machine, just uh, context-free languages. All right. <clears throat> we start off, and let's do it for the string. Um, oh, my gosh. How do I know how to do this? Let's do it for the string A, B, A, A, B, A. First off, we need to check if this is included in the language palindrome. A, A, B, B, A, A. So yes, this should be accepted for the string palindrome. So let's go ahead and mark that in green, knowing that that's what we want to get to. Let's follow our algorithm and then look on it. And I'm going to be clicking back and forth. I'm sorry, but I can't think of a better way uh, to do this. All right, so we go back and we're here. The reader is at the beginning of our string. Everything is blanked out. We're here and we hit start. We go, we, we begin at start. And it says, if I see an A, we're going to write an X, move right, and go to match B. Let's see if I can get it right. There we go. All right, so I read an A, I write an X, I move to the right, and I go to match A. Okay, so I'm at match A. If I see a B, I write a B. I move right and I go to match A. If I see an A, I write an A, I move right and I go to match A. The only thing that keeps me from moving all the way to the right is if I see a blank. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to keep moving into the right until I see a blank. And match A says, if I see a blank, I write a blank, I move to the left and I go to mark A. So I go all the way from here to the blank, I write a blank and I move left and then I go to mark A. I see mark A and it says, if there's an A, write an X and move left. There's an A, I write an X and I move to the left. Then it says, go to rewind. So it goes to rewind and it says, if there's an A, write an A. Nope. If there's a B, write a B and move left. There's a B, we write a B, we move left. <coughs> go to rewind. If there's an A, write an A, move left, go to rewind. So we do the same thing. We move to the left, we go to rewind. We move to the, we read a B, we move to the left, we go to rewind. And here we are on rewind, we got to an X. If we see an X, we write an X, we move to the right and go to Start. We see an X, we write an X, we move to the right, 
And now we go to start. Whew. We're just now getting halfway of where we were before, but this is important. We're at start. If I see a B, I write an X and I move to the right. I see a B, I write an X and I move to the right. I go back up and it says, if we see a B, write a B, we go to match B. All right, match B says, if I see a B, move right, go to match B. All right, so this is all my fast forward stuff. I keep going off to the right until I see a blank or an X, and then I move to the left. So I keep going right until I see a blank or an X. I see an X, so I write an X, and I move to the left. I saw an X, I wrote an X, so I moved to the left, and I went to mark B, All right? So now I'm at mark B. If I see an A, reject the string. If I see a B, I write an X and move left. If I see a B, I write an X, and I move left. Then it said, after I write an I'm sorry, right here. If I see a B, write an X and move left, and then it says, go to rewind. Rewind. We skip over the A's and B's again. We've already done this. If I see an A, write an A, move. If I see a B, write a B, all the way until I see an X. So we're going to go all the way over until I see an X. When I see an X, I write an X and move to the right. And where do I go to? Start. All right. So now we're at start. If I see an A, I write an X and I move right. I see an A, so I write an X and I move to the right. <clears throat> and I go to match A. Now match A. If it sees a B, it goes right on past it. If it sees an A, it goes right on past it. It goes all the way until I see a blank. And then it moves left. All right, I was right here in match A that I had to go, if I see a B, write a B and move to the right. If I see an A, write an A. So I'm going to skip on past and past and past and past and past until I see a blank. So it appears that this part isn't done. Match A is missing something. What is missing? It's missing checking for an uh, X like match B has. Good. And, it, and we're going to do the same thing as match B. If we see an X, we're going to write an X. We're going to move to the left. We're going to go to mark A. All right, so going back to it, now we're see we see the X, we move to the left, and we go to match. Uh, you go to mark, mark A. Mark A, good. If it's an A, we write an X and move left. If it's a B, reject. It is an A, so we mark an X, and we move left and then we go to rewind rewind says if there's an a we write an a if there's a b write a b if there's an x we write an x and move right there's an x so we wrote an x and we move right then go to start Crap. Would you put a, if it's inside of start, if it's an X, just accept? I don't know. Because you should have failed ever, uh, on all the other options. Like uh, everywhere else, it would have rejected if it was invalid. So if you are re rewinding and you go to start um, and you're on an X, it should just accept them. Thing. What do y'all think? What Tyler is proposing is if X accept. And I'll tell you one thing that's super important. At some point in this algorithm, we have to accept a string. And A, B, A, A, B, A should have been accepted 
So this feels like a pretty good place to accept because I've matched all of my questions. All of those, was there an A at the beginning and the end? Yep. Is there B, B? And somehow we ended up here and all of our things are, are matched, right? We matched everything and there's nothing left to do. So my question is, is Tyler right? If we got to the start and there's nothing left but X's, do we accept it? At least one person has to give me a, 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 a Tyler is correct. Ah, Tierra did it. Hannah did it too. Awesome. Yes, this is the accept. This is where we accept our strings. All right. Is it perfect? Not yet. But we are very, very close. All right. So now we can start thinking about this with a little bit more uh, awareness, I guess. All right. If we started our very, very first stream and I read the very first character, a blank letter, is that an even length palindrome? Technically, yes. Technically, Maybe. yes. It's the empty string. There was, it was an empty string, so there was no character there. And nothing is the same backwards and forwards, and zero is an even length. So, so I'm going to change this as well to where this is an accept, because it should accept empty strings, all right? So I don't – I think we're very, very close. I think we're very, very close here. And to figure out if this is right or not, we need to actually go through and check with another string. We checked a string that we know that works. Now we want to check a string that we know doesn't. I want to check the string for BAA. Now this should get rejected. Okay, this should be rejected. So let's let's fill it out in our tape here. When this starts off, it should be like this. Come on. All right. Let's think about this like our way, okay? Uh, we would start here with our reader B. And the last character is not a B. That ain't a palindrome, all right? So we know from the beginning. Let's check it out with our algorithm. We start off, if it's a B, write an X and move right. Go to match B. Match B says if it's an A, move right without changing it. If it's an A, move right and right changing it. But when we get to a blank, we write the blank and move left, and then we go to mark B. Mark B says if there's an A there, we reject. There is an A there, and this is rejected. This absolutely worked. Rejected at that exact moment. How do y'all feel about this? I expected a little bit of silence there. <laughs> All right. So we have, oh, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it and kind of appreciate the, the, the feedback. It really helps me. Uh, One question. Just, hit me. What, a, uh, just a B or just an A, that would be accepted based off of what this algorithm says oh, right now. Good, good, good. You found something that didn't work. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's show the string for... Letter B. And hey, this might truly be broken. Let's try it out. Uh, this would be blank. And this would be the string of the letter B. All right. Uh, let's check it. I go to B. I go start, and it says if it's B, write an X and move right. Go to match B. Match B goes, well, if it's a blank, write blank and move left and go to mark B. All right. That brings us here. And we're at mark B. All right. Tyler, I know it was, I know it was, uh, uh, your idea to point this out.
But I want to see if somebody else can tell me how do we change this to where it rejects this string. It should be rejecting it. We're at mark B. If it's an X, then reject. I think so. I think that's going to be sufficient. Same if it's so. an X, reject it out. Awesome. What was that? Same for Mark A. You were right. What was that other one? I was just saying the same thing for Mark A. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sorry for repeatedly talking over you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is absolutely done. I feel confident that this works perfectly. There's no blanks when we mark. Um, there's no blank for rewind. So I think this is perfect. Uh, this is our first Turing machine. Okay, so if you were reading closely at the beginning of the lecture, I said that we weren't going to do state diagrams. But to be clear, I did tell you that that was a lie when I told it to you, okay? So here's what's crazy. <clears throat> Writing out these algorithms is easier to me because we have um, like a, a predisposition to algorithms, right? We, we know how to write algorithms. We all took 390 and we all got an A in 390. And, and, and we know those data structures like the back of our hand. We can do things with stacks and cues all the time. So for a lot of us, this feels more comfortable to have these algorithms, these, these go-to statements that look like 290, but easier, right? But here's what's crazy. Each one of these labels is essentially a state. If you're comfortable with what we did today, I've got the best news for you. You don't have to worry about circles and arrows anymore because all you have to do is write out a circle for each one of these. And I'm sorry, I accidentally forgot two of my uh, mistakes when I was preparing for this. Uh, this is Mark, eh? And I'm not going to do all of this today, but I'm going to show you this is this is really how easy it is. All right. So if I am at start and I see an A, I write an X and I move right and I go to match A. If I am at start, oh shoot, I gotta do my All right, so if I'm at start, and I read an A, I write an X, and I move right, and then I go to match A. I don't know if that was capital. I guess it auto capital for me. All right, so let's go back to our, our, our thing. If I'm at start and I see a B, I write a B and move right, and then I go to match B. When I say go to match B, that means that I'm going to have an arrow that goes from start to match B, and then it follows. If I read a B, I write an X and I move right. If I'm at start and I see a blank or an X, I go to accept. So if I'm at start, if I see if I see a blank, I write a blank move right, whatever, and I go to accept. I'm at start, and I see an X, I write an X and move right, whatever, and I go to accept. One, two, three, four transitions out. One, two, three, four parts of the start state. It is really that easy, all right? So let's look at match A. If I were at match A, if I get a B, I write a B, I move right. If I see an A, I write an A, I move right. So if I'm looking at this, 
for this match A, and I'm only I'm not gonna do all of these. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep looping. If I see an A, I write an A and move right. If I see a B, I write a B and move right. Two loops. If I see a blank, or I see an X, Move to the left. That's it. All right. Let's think about it. When I'm at match A, there's if I get a dang auto cap. If I'm at match A, if I get an A, all right, that was straight from here. If I'm at match A and I get an A, I write an A, move right, and go to match A. I go to match A. If I see an A, I write an A and I move right. I am just copying it super, super straightforward. All I have to do is for every one of these labels, I go to the state that matches it, and then I draw the four transitions from it. We just, uh, we just created, we showed that these state diagrams can be written as an algorithm. It's code. This transition function is now an algorithm. I'm sorry, I'm banging my desk over here. This transition function is an algorithm that we can write no different than 290, which is how we wrote on microprocessors. This is it. This equivalence is why we got this far. The circles and arrows now correlate to an actual algorithm, an actual thing that we write that looks like computer code, right? This is how far we've gotten. And this is why Turing machines are so huge. This algorithm has this, if we would have finished it out, had this state diagram to go with it. We now see Turing machines as computers. This was a revelation that made Alan Turing the father of computer science. This mathematical model is equivalent to a general purpose computer. Are there any questions about it? Wait, so you said that this was uh, mainly used uh, for on microprocessors or microcontrollers for like control theory? Does that have any application? Is uh, any algorithm. So I don't want you to get too focused on that. It's a good question, but I don't want you to get too focused on that because it's only that the algorithms that you use in 290 for microcontrollers or microprocessors, where you've used these labels and go-to statements, uh, where you've loaded into a sp sp uh, specific register or something like that, it's it's very closely tied to that style of algorithm for either one of them, all right? So what that means is, is that as we build out, you know, these the C programming language, the C programming language is compiled into microprocessor code, which looks a lot like these algorithms. We can make it look as fancy as we want to, but it all comes back to the code that we see in 290. So if we, this is that stuff. So um, yeah, this is the same sort of code. Don't tie it too much to the processor other than saying you could rewrite any programming language to look like this algorithm. And it, and it is a very good question, but it's, uh, it won't be that, uh, that tied to a microcontroller or processor. Either one of them is gonna be written like this stuff. Right, like so like, like an EXE or something, it's just a series of moving little small values in and out of registers like in 290 and they can be modeled as such. Absolutely. And we have a little bit of context to help us out here. And I would say that after being comfortable with Turing machines, 290 would be way easier to take <laughs> it's, uh, to try to understand how that how that's relevant. So it's a very good question. Uh, I saw a question and it went away before. Interesting. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Tony, insightful question. Uh, he's asking, uh, did you call it a tape because this is how the data reels of the 1960s worked? Absolutely. Uh, the very first versions of uh, Turing machines, like the bomb that was used for uh, breaking the Enigma code, worked on reels. 
And uh, the fact is that the tape was the first version of magnetic storage that we had. So that was the reason why it was used because it wasn't really the same as using things like vacuum tubes to hold these uh, values. So instead what we had were these very long magnetic tapes, but 100% it comes from the original data reels back in the, the, the 50s and 60s. And that was very much what he first saw as being the general purpose computer. He didn't see the von Neumann architecture. That was not, the, the, what we used was not even <coughs> in his brain and he didn't care about it because everything that we create on top of it is no different than those Turing bombs in the, the 1940s. So good question. Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean by the punch card? The punch card. So uh, punch cards were. Uh, when did the punch cards? So come so along? Pun punch cards are, are completely different. They're they're more like a long term persistent storage to deal with uh, things like accessibility. So uh, the way we use punch cards, it was just a little bit different. It was more about the limited resources. Punch cards were a way to have this really really cheap way to have. Uh, programmatic input. So it was more seen as a, as programmatic input as compared to something like a keyboard uh, to where it could be persistent in, or consistent input coming into a machine. So it wouldn't necessarily be the same, but, uh, and, and one of the main differences is punch cards, the vast majority of them were, were read only for that. So that's why it would only be input. By the way, I've got a big box of punch cards in my office. If anybody ever wants a punch card, just come get one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good piece of nostalgia. All right. So uh, I do have one more thing I wanted to do today. Uh, I had a question. Uh, let me double check that this is the right question. Uh Good, good. The, the question was, uh, uh, is can we get more practice using the flower method? Uh, I want to fully understand when to use it and does it matter the order of the petals? Uh, and, and all of that is like really, really exceptional uh, as far as me as, as giving me a chance to, to, to answer and explain what's going on. So the question submitted was this. How, when do I use the flower petals? Okay, so I'm going to answer that right here. And we use, we want to go from a context-free grammar to a PDA. And, and yeah, there's two ways, but I only showed it this way. So if I give you something like this, it's a way for you to transition this to that PDA. Why does it matter? Well, it actually kind of showed off why it mattered today, because we're doing something very similar to this with Turing machines. Uh, we're going from this grammar notation to a PDA notation, and it's kind of back and forth how we're doing that with the Turing machines. So uh, the way it works, every single time. Now, I drew this from top to bottom last time when I was doing it by, by pen and paper. Uh, now I'm doing it left to right. Uh, so every time we want to do a translation or a conversion between a context-free grammar to a PDA, we have four states. They are Q sub zero, Q sub one, Q sub loop, and Q sub F. Now I've drawn them from top to bottom. So it would be Q zero, Q one, Q loop, and Q F. Uh, this doesn't look like a flower. It looks kind of like a weird uh, bat or a bunny rabbit with wings but we're going to do our best here, all right? And the way it works is every single time we have these same set transitions. We have our first one, that is, we do nothing, which I'm going to write these as lowercase e's just to save some time. We pop nothing. And we push onto the stack, the bottom of the stack marker, all right? And once again, E is just going to be the empty string, all right? In the same way that like, these things, it doesn't even matter what the grammar is. It does not matter at all. On the back end, we do the exact opposite. We take this. And we pop 
the dollar sign and we push on nothing. And then the other thing we can do before even knowing what it is that we do on this part, we go ahead and pop on the very first non-terminal, which is this S, this starting non-terminal, all right? And everything from this is just uh, sort of repetitive, all right? So on the bottom of this one, and I usually do this on the bottom left hand right, there's these two transitions that we have to add for everything. For every non-terminal, I'm sorry, for every terminal that we have, we need to match those terminals up. So every single, so I see A's and B's. So I'm going to have A's and B's right here. And all we're going to do is match those terminals up with that Q loop. That's what we're going to be doing there. Um, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to mark these off. I'm going to show for every single one of them uh, what we're doing with uh, adding these transitions. So I'm going to combine these two, and I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to essentially check off each one of these when I add them to my uh, uh, PDA. So every single thing that we do, we see this loop. We add that to our loop. That's a single transition because it's S goes to A. So we have it here. And what it looks like is without reading anything from the input string, whatever's on the left hand side is what we pop off. Whatever is on the right hand side is what we push on. S goes to A. It literally looks. Shoot, I did that in the wrong place. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. All right. I was supposed to be here. When I see S, I read in nothing from the input string. I pop whatever's on the left-hand side, the non-terminal, and then I push on whatever's on the right. And when I do that, I finish that transition. And we're going to go through and do that to every single transition that's in here. Now, I'm going to do the easiest ones first. I see another one that looks like A goes to B. That's going to be looking exactly like this. When I have A goes to B, it is A goes to B when I'm doing this conversion. Now, <clears throat> I think this is fairly easy because look, A arrow B, A arrow B. It just kind of makes sense when it looks there. So I'm going to mark that when it's done. Uh, then I'm also going to do this one, all right? I'm going to read nothing, and if I see a B, I go to that I, I pop, no, I push on nothing. All right. So it really looks like it's exactly the same thing where we don't read it. The ones that get hard is are these right here. All right. Now on these, I want to be absolutely clear that the order matters. All right. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. I'm going to do A B. And then B, A, I'm sorry. I'm going to switch this up just to make sure that we can see the order here. All right. With these, it is a very similar start. Okay. I'm going to start here on the left. And we're going to do this one right here. A goes to A, B, capital A. All right. It starts off the same way. We don't read anything from the input string. We pop off what's ever on the left-hand side. But then we're going to push on in reverse order this side. So we're going to push on the capital A right there. Now from here, we're going to push on in reverse order. So that looks like this. A, the capital A, then the lowercase b. And then... the lowercase a, all right? So what we essentially did is we popped off the a, and then we pushed on in reverse order, the capital A, the lowercase b, and the lowercase a, a, b, a. With that, this one is done. 
The same thing here. We're going to copy this largely the same way. Here we're going to pop off the B and we're going to push on the non-terminal B. And I'm going to wait here until somebody tells me that I'm wrong. It needs to be a, a lowercase a. It needs to be a lowercase a. It needs to be in reverse order. Very, very good. All right. So we popped off the B, and then we push on in reverse order. So we're going to do this same way as before. And then what is the last thing that we push on to this stack? Uh, capital B. Capital B. All right. So that doesn't look as much like a flower. It looks like crazy nightmare bunny or something, but it is the it is the sort of just follow this path and it works. To verify it, I think you need to take the time and go through this with the string that you know that's in the language and try to figure out if it makes sense. A good string for this language would be A B A B B A. And if you can get that to work then you might you might put the, the the two and two together about how it works but the string is a b a b b a uh that should be in that language try that out try it out and see and see if it works in the string it should work okay uh and i'm buttoned up pretty close to the end of class uh oh i see dr paulo left a message dr paulo said that uh the go-to's bring back old memories please notice that he did not say fond memories he said old memories, <laughs> something from his past that he's kind of regretting having to see today. <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions for me? All right. So uh, everybody, Denver, Tyler, uh, Tony, uh, Tierra, Hannah, Connor, Alex, uh, all of y'all that, and Philip, all of y'all that, that, you know, contributed today, I really, really appreciate it. This was a much better class than, than I thought I could have using PowerPoint. So I really, really appreciate y'all's input here. Uh, I'll send out an email about the exam, but I don't think you should worry about it. Uh, you're going to have all day on Thursday to work on it. We're not going to have class on Thursday and you're just going to email me or Dr. Regis the exam when you're done it. And you can email it to both of us just to make double sure that we get it. Uh, and we'll do our best to have those grades in as soon as possible. All right. So thank you, everyone, for today. I'll have this posted to YouTube as soon as I can. Y'all have a great week.